Okay, hey guys, I'm back with Ace Attorney Investigations 2, Prosecutor's Path, and we're gonna do the final investigation, like the final part now, and um, we just suspected the warden of actually doing the killing, so I heard about all the case from Justin Darnan here. Hold it! <clears throat> from Judge Courtney, are you two close? As close as fish and water. Are you jealous? Jealous? On the first day of the investigation, she filled us in on the situation. In exchange for our cooperation, she explained the details of the case to us. How could you say that? You're so mean, Justin Darnley. Truth is the truth. I believe it should be told as such. For some reason, those two seem kind of... scary. <laughs> have, had I committed the murder, it would have been inside the taking the pl it would have been taken in place inside the holding cell. The murder, in <coughs> the murder in occurred inside the cell? How can you be so certain about that? Well, everywhere else would be under surveillance, right? And the victim's blood was found there too. That blood was actually from when he was struck by Albert, but... I don't think it was necessary to inform her of this fact. This doesn't mean it's proven. Do you, you do know that, right? I see no contradictions in assuming the crime scene was at the detention center. But I couldn't have moved the body, I, I never went into the prison. You never went into this prison? Into the prison? Do you have proof of this? My, my, can't you wait for me to finish? I was caught up in my work until the show, I was stuck in my office. Oops. Hold it! You were in your office the whole time? Nothing strange happened? Nothing at all. Were you looking for something? I'm not too good at tidying it up. I always forget where I put everything. The other day I, I lost import lost track of important evidence. How could you have made such a grave error? If so were to take something from me, I wouldn't have noticed it the entire year. I guess it would be hard to attack with attack with the key to the breaker room. On the day of the incident, I was working in my office and searching for the lo for lost items. On the other hand, I couldn't have gone to the prison, even if I had wanted to. Check it up if you like. You'll find there's no record of me entering the prison. You did not enter the prison from the entrance? But what if there was another route? Oh my, are you suggesting such something like a secret passage? I don't know anything like that exists. It's my firm belief that you do possess an alternate route. That route that was neither the entrance or a secret passage. This route you used was from here. Um, let's see. She came from. I Maybe mean, she came from the well? Because if she, if she came from the front entrance, someone would have noticed, right? That's what I'm thinking. The well? This, this gate. Uh, made the gate? The barbed wire fence? You would have moved nightly to your office first. This leads you directly to the guard inside the courtyard. If you have moved through here and passed through the barbed wire fence, you would have arrived at the prison without passing through the entrance or the tunnel. Or a tunnel. Ooh, I wonder what Mr. Edgeworth is saying. Haven't you noticed? There's a high voltage current running through that f through the fence. Yeah, obviously she couldn't have passed through it like that. The current, the currents of the fence would have been switched off at the breaker room. You're the only one that ha who had the key word in Roland. Most amusing. However, the breaker room is located in the prison side of the courtyard. How would the warden have access it from the detention center? Quite right. Got you there, Mr. Edward. That's... There's no record of her passing through the prison. The entrance. It wouldn't have been possible for her to turn off the fence breaker. But Warden Roland was the only one who had access. Don't let this phase you, Miles. But if I don't have a solution for this, she'll get away. 
Uncle Ray said, don't think, never said, don't think, you know. It's just not good to be so stubborn about it, that's all. But no matter how you think about it, Warden and Roland couldn't have done it this alone. Hmm? Prosecutor Earthworth, if you have, if you have failed to come up with a new possibility, I'm assuming. I am not amused, interrupting my judgment only to be silent? Without thinking, I have just a uh, blurted out objection. I have to answer. I won't let this end here. My reasoning is not over yet. How do you... How do you... Uh, how did she use the breaker without leaving the detention center? It's perfectly possible. With this method. How is it possible to turn off the breaker? Um... position as the warden, I think? That's the only one there, because if she's a warden, she can just say, ah, oh, it's possible to turn off the breaker because she's the warden, like, turn it off for her, right? Her position as the warden made it possible. So I was able to use the breaker for the detention center because I am the warden? In that case, I might, I might, I have to be not just a warden, but a psych as well. Hmm, that wasn't right. It would be difficult for Warden Roland to use a breaker alone. Which means... Indeed, it's impossible for her, the Warden to use the breaker. No, there was one other way she could have done it. How is it possible to turn off the breaker? Uh, okay, she had to have an accomplice. Indeed, she had, it was impossible to, to, for one person, but what if there was two? Exactly what I expected from you, Miles. Yes, you had an accomplice on the prison side. Enough! I am disappointed in your, in your, in you, Prosecutor Edgeworth. What's that, pal? You making fun of Mr. Edgeworth? The inmates at this prison all wear bracelets. If they try to go where they please, they will set off an alarm. Ah! So you notice, this is a prison after all. Not only prisoners, but the guards too are under cons constant scrutiny. Why didn't anyone notice Albert? The only ones allowed to move around freely are the animals, and they certainly cannot have used the breaker. Th it's still possible that a person did it. Excluding the inmates and the guards, just what kind of person you say who would do it? It was. You can't exclude the inmates and the guards just yet. There's only one person. One person whose movements were not restricted. This evidence shows that they were... There was someone in the prison that could move around freely, and that was... Remember, it was, um, Sawit. His bracelet was broken for a while, so he can move around freely. That is... It looks like a bracelet worn by by the prisoners. This takes... This belongs to a certain model inmate, and it's broken. What? Just who on earth does this belong to? Frank Sawit, the warden's favorite inmate. Don't you think it's strange? He managed to keep this hidden while he moved around freely in his daily prison life. Golly! When you think about it, it shouldn't have, it shouldn't have been possible. It, it'd be hazardous, I guess. I guess that it would, this was because he was a special case. Just like Serhan Dogen is in the special cell. The prosecutor's statement is merely conjecture. You could find out by simply asking Solomon himself. It's my firm belief that Mr. Solomon Roll and Roland, uh, Warden Roland are partners in crime. Do that to their collaboration on other root services. The real route that Mr. the Nutley's body was moved to the prison. There are two obstacles that would need to be dealt with. The security camera in the front of Nightly's cell. And the electric fence on the on the on the in the courtyard. Both of these problems could have been solved with a single stroke. By having Solid switch off the breakers in the breaker room. Mr. Edgeworth, could you wait one moment? Do you still intend to deny it, Warden Roland? I give in, I confess. Warden Roland, no! This cannot be! Yes, it's just as he says. Frank Sawa and I were partners in crime. No way! 
You did it, Mr. Edgeworth. Well done, Miles. At last, we have the real corporate corner. Like Mr. Edgeworth said, frankly, uh, Frankie operated the breaker. But we were not responsible for the Barnatley's murder. What? Warden Roland, whatever do you mean? Judge Courtney, would the goddess of law hear my confession? The goddess of law is merciful. She will, ob well, she will absolve you. I was being threatened. That's why I had no choice but to do as I was told. So who was threatening you? Sir Han Dogen, the assassin. Dogen. It's been going on since that man came to the prison. I will never forget that day. When we were both alone, he suddenly said to me, I have many dogs outside the prison. Dogs? Loyal dogs who obey my every command. I soon realized what Dogen was referring to were not really dogs, but his he his human henchmen. And that's not that's not all he said. He said you better watch how you treat me. If you don't wanna get your fam if you don't want you and your family to become dog food. I had no choice. I gave him the special cell. I gave him anything he desired. Anything he desired? You don't mean the supplier. That's right. Anything he ordered, I would deliver to him. An underground dealership. I was the only one who won over Frankie. It was simple. I just offered him something, some special privileges within the prison. And these underground dealings? Once a week, in the middle of the night, Frankie would shut off the two breakers, two of the breakers, so I could move freely from my office into the courtyard without being seen by the security camera. I would go past the fence and drop the goods down to the well near the prison. And then I would sprinkle some of this perfume over it. That's a true identity of the secret scent. The scent of the perfume was the signal for Dogen's dog. After picking up the scent, it would carry the goods to Dogen. Of course, this had to be done while Edward was away from his cell. I'm surprised he never found out about it, pal. <clears throat> we have a strict timetable at this here at this prison. Meal time, exercise time. It's very easy to know when he's away from his cell. And since little Rocky is afraid of Dogen's dog, I didn't have to worry about him making noise. Having full knowledge of the prison's inner workings, she made the deliveries herself. This would have ensured that there were no slip-ups. Frankie would turn off the breakers on the back, turn the breakers back on in the early morning, and the delivery was complete. I then modified the timestamp on the security camera. You have told us a great deal. The goddess of law accepts your penitent confession. As the warden of the prison, how could I have done such a foolish thing? The day that Knightley was killed was also a delivery day. It seems that Frankie was working the breakers as usual. But that day, I had nothing to send, so I did not go to the courtyard at all. The secret of the supply, uh, supply system. So that was... So then, Roland's system... Ah, Warden Roland was... The police had been searching for Dogen's henchmen for ages. I had been helping them, but... I had been interrogating him personally in my office, but... No matter how much evidence we have, we can't get a single word out of him. So the reason you kept interrogating him? Yes. So it was to find out his. It was to find his henchmen. I brought all the evidence from the police office and carried out the interrogation myself. I kept an eye on all his actions and examined all of his mail. Mail. It looks like, like his correspondence chest letters. But I never could under undercover his. His true identity of his henchmen. This fear is something that I can never understand. It's something that you can never understand. Prosecutor Edward, you were listening, right? I said that this confession clears the warden of all suspicion. Is that really necessary to press her any further than this? Is it necessary to press her any further? Um, I don't know, we're not completely sure that she didn't do it, so I think we should keep pressing further. Judge Courtney, my question isn't over yet. I'm sure the goddess of law isn't satisfied yet either. You mean to badger this woman further? Even if she was threatened by Dogen. 
This does not prove that she wasn't the culprit in this case. She was able to use the supply route and to transport Knightley's body. Do you have any evidence that supports this? The body gave off a sweet scent, and sweet scent perfume that was used to signify a delivery. Can you exp explain this fact? Oh, of course. Since I have made many deliveries, the scent would have lingered around the well. When the body was moved through the well, the scent would have tr transferred to it. Mr. Albert also testified to this fact. That's it. For some reason, that well gave, us a ni gave off a nice scent. Nice scent? I don't know what it was, but it smelled like sweet, like candy. The lingering scent in the well would, of course, be picked up by anything passing through. <clears throat> the defense rests, I see. In that case, the court is adjourned. Mr. Ashford, isn't there anything we can do? What should I do? Isn't this as far is this as far as I can go? Is it over already? Yes, Sebastian, it is. And now, court is officially adjourned. Hold it. Who was that? Who was that? Oh, okay. Is that, is that nice of you to adjourn things like that, Courtney Pie? Mr. Shields, are you objecting to the court the court adjourning? Of course not. I ain't, I ain't got no objection or anything like that. Go ahead and adjourn court. Do whatever you like. Hey, what are you doing, Mr. Shields? Well there, calm down, Kay. You want some chocolate? Is this a joke? You have to excuse me, I just have one tiny request to make. I Simon Key's attorney. That's right, you are the defense attorney in charge of this case, aren't you? Exactly. Did you forget? That's so mean. But you just left everything to Mr. Edward and didn't, and didn't do anything at all. Yes, that's right, that's why. I thought I'd do my job a bit. Do your job? That hardly sounds like you at all. It's to prepare for the trial. I'd like to ask the warden a few questions. Surely you jest. What more do you expect to hear from her? Well, Miss Warden, I'd like to hear about your thoughts on the culprit. My thoughts? Uncle Ray believes that Simon is not, is not the culprit. It seems that Miss Warren also suspects, sus suspects someone other than Simon. I'd like to hear you out. Mr. Edward, what is Mr. Shields up to? He's trying to lure the warden into testifying. Why was the supply route why was the supply route used to transport the body? I'd say it was to pin the crime on Dogan. Ah, I see. If you committed a murder here, she would be transferred to another prison. One with tired security. And that would get rid of the troublemaker. Exactly, she wouldn't pass up a chance like that. Hold on a second, a culprit besides Simon? What do you mean? Sam was the one who was supposed to prosecute. Exactly, so wouldn't it be better for if the bestie would also listen to what she had to say? Amazing, Mr. Shields. You managed to drag the bestie into this too. <clears throat> Warrior Roland, is this acceptable? Oh, you. It's fine, it's fine. You understand a woman's heart. Thank you, Mademoiselle. Actually, I had thought this over. I'd like to tell you that my thought, tell you my thoughts. You'll let me speak, won't you, Justin, darling? Is that right? I understand. Mr. Shields, awesome! Whew, that's a close shave. <laughs> thanks to Mr. S thanks to Mr. Shields. Thank you, Mr. Shields. Ah. No, no, I'm leaving the rest to you. Remember what I said? The fence attorney never gives up. That is the fate of our clients that rests on our shoulders, after all. It'd be uncool if Uncle Ray didn't put that into practice. Now then, Miles, it's your turn to show off you'll never g that you'll never give up. Right. Well then, will you listen to my story? My story. I believe that the culprit in this case could only have been Dogen. I have no idea what transpired between Dogen and the victim. It simply could have not been... It could have been Dogen that was simply displeased with them. In any case, he was the one that stabbed the victim to death. He probably had a dog that disposed of the body. This is the truth of the case. N the victim, Knightley, was it? I think it's a truly terrible thing. 
Taking a man's life, you mean. That's how you go about saying it, isn't it? If only I had been more vigilant, his death would have not happened. That's why I want to clear the, up his regrets. What a Roland. How considerate. I'm sure that Mr. Knightley in heaven is overflowing with gratitude. Is gratitude really what Knightley feels? <clears throat> My story. I believe that the culprit is the case that could have only been Dogen. Oops. You seem very confident of that. How can you be so sure? The child of this home are the, l the little boys and girls. Uh, believe in yourself and believe in your friends. Believe in me and believe in the guards. There is no way any of these hardworking children could have committed the cr committed a murder. Quite emotional re a reason. Makes sense coming from someone like her. Only Dogen would be capable of something like that. I have no idea what transpired between Dogen and the victim. Oh, no, no, he says he didn't even know each other. No one was held in the detention center, and Dogen was in prison. They couldn't have made any contact, don't you think? That would have been prevented trouble? That would have pre prevented trouble? The prison is quite confined, right? There are many ways for them to meet. Natalie was murdered days before he would have been sentenced to prison. Surely, there aren't many ways of meeting a that could have occurred. Even without a direct meeting, Dogen could have still have caused trouble, mark my words. He simply could have not been Dogen that was pleased, displeased with him. He could have been. Oops. <laughs> what could have Knightley done in the detention center to displease him? That was just an example. Don't you have to take- you don't have to take it so seriously. Didn't I say that I have no idea what transpired between the, them? Nevertheless, you certainly are a serious one, Edward dear. What's this? That tawdry gaze. Always oh, standing up straight and stiff. Very nice. Looking ver very clever, my dear. I think I'm about to become your biggest fan. Ugh. Mr. Edward, stay focused. It's just a flesh one. Right. Is this some form of psychological warfare? <laughs> In any case, he was the one that stuck the victim to death. I'd love to hear your thoughts about the circumstance surrounding the murder. Well, I suppose it was a simple job. During his booking, I learned that the victim had some kind of injury to his neck. He couldn't turn his neck to the right. And I remember him saying something like that. Booking. That's a process that goes undergoes before locked up and being locked up in the detention center. It sounds like you really don't know a lot about Knightley. I only know a little. In any case, he would have been an easy target for Dogen. Perhaps he used that chisel hidden in the chessboard? The victim wouldn't have had a chance to scream. I see. Your opinion will be very valuable and a valuable reference. Can you add those last statements to the testimony? Oh, you're making me blush. You're so cute. Oh my gosh. I'm just kidding. I'll continue. Okay, first of all, how did she... Oh, damn. How did she know that there's a chisel in the chessboard? Because it was in a package. Is she the one that opened the package? Objection! That's what I'm thinking, because she's not supposed to know. Warden Roland, you are certainly sharp witted. Hey, enough with the titles. Call me Patty. P A T T Y. Ugh. However, there is something that you are a little too knowledgeable about. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Embarrassed? Such an inexperienced child, Mr. Edward, dear. Gah! Fight on, Mr. Edward! You said you didn't really know much about that about Knightley. If that's the case, how did you know about the chisel inside the chessboard? Of course, the entrance check. Enough with the poor excuses. The entrance check? The chessboard wasn't something Knightley brought with them. It was brought to him later by Mr. Keys. He didn't even have it with him when he arrived here. That's... My mistake. I meant the parcel check. If you assume that, there were many suspicious points. Why was it uh, a chisel uh, immediately confiscated? Not the music. Judge Courtney, did you tell anyone about the trick to the chess this chessboard? I did not. 
If no information of our infestation was leaked, then how did you find out? You could have not examined this during the entrance check or parcel check. Certainly. Someone in the warrant's position would have never let a chisel slip by. Exactly. So answer this. How, Warden Roland? When and where did you learn about the chessboard secret? Hmm. In that case, I shall answer it for you. It's because... I give up, Edward dear. It is as you say. I interrogated nightly. And that's how I learned about it. The chessboard. But, please believe me, I did not kill anyone. Enough. It would appear that we have uncovered some vital information. I'll ask you to testify once more, if that's alright with you, Prosecutor Edward. No objections here. Thank you, Edward dear. I'll do my best. Well then, Warden Roland, I trust that there will be no lies from here on out. Her pool, uh, pool of lies is slowly running dry, and soon I would bring out her true nature. My story, part two. I wouldn't have go as far to call it as an inter interrogation. I always make sure to talk to all the new arrivals. Mr. Knightley. Yes, we had a little chat. After our little talk, he went right back to his cell, I assure you. She's piling on lies on top of lies, not realizing it's only tying the noose around her neck. You speak with new prisoners, you say? That's right. I'm glad you understand. Objection! Your testimony is not solid evidence. It requires more than just understanding. Well then, Prosecutor Edgeworth, you may begin your cross-examination. Rebuttal. I wouldn't go so far to call as an attorney- Oh, damn, I keep doing that. You're saying that you interrogated him the day before the show? Yes, around 3 a.m. on the 27th. 3 at night. That matches the time of the death of Knightley's autopsy report. So you summoned him that late at night and he wasn't asleep? Well, a guard was attacked in Knightley's cell, remember? After that incident, we checked his cell and inquired about the circumstances. I'm sure that all that excitement was, is made it hard to sleep. Knightley was wide awake, you know? So even though it was irregular, you still carried out this light, late night interrogation? Edward, dear, you're so mean. Ugh. It may have been irregular, but the truth is I had to move. You can call it whatever you like, it still doesn't change the facts. Please excuse him, I'll give him my incompetent apprentice a good scolding later. But for now, mademoiselle, what did you mean when you said you had to move? I thought it was obvious, Miss Monsieur. I spoke with them in my office. Her office, the rep that she used to move Knightley's body. Please I add that statement to the testimony. <laughs> of course. Hmm. And where is your office located exactly? You know that sign in the detention center hallway? You mean the one that says no entry? Yes, that short walk up there, that aisle, is about five minutes from the cell block. I heard that room exits into the courtyard. Of course. That the cell... The side of the courtyard is my private garden. Oh, I get it. You're going to say I used that route to move the body. Indeed. You you're, must be able to use it if you use that route. <laughs> For now, that is merely a possibility. There is no decisive evidence to support it. But there's no other way the body could have been moved. Charlie, you haven't forgotten my theory that Simon Keys dropped the body into the well? That's right, that's right. What's what she said? Ugh. Pursuing this point further would be hazardous. I always make sure to talk to all the new arrivals. What did you talk about? What indeed? It's just a trifling conversation. What kind of animals do you like? What kind of hobbies did what was his hobbies were, what that sort of thing. Hobbies? I assume you men he mentioned chess? Oh yes, that's all Knightley would ever talk about. Now that I think about it, the note that he had in his room, this probably had something to do with the chess with chess too. So Warren saw Knightley's note. He had a little chat. 
What was Knightley like during the interrogation? He was very honest. Mr. Knightley was... Honest, pal? He talked about a croissant in some kind of promo. In croissant and chess piece promotions, I presume. He looks like he was a usual chess-loving self. After talk, he went back to his cell, I assure you. If he really returned to the cell, there's no way he would be a corpse now. I know you're suggesting that I killed him during the interrogation, but... I couldn't have possibly had a motive to kill him that way, could I? Dozen was the only one I hated, and he had no connection with the victim. She, uh, she only hated Dogen. Please add that statement to your testimony. That was one I hated. I, he had no connection with the victim. Yes, he did. What was a chess game? Your chess game. That's the connection they have between each other. Objection! Objection! Judge Courtney, I'd like you to have a look at this. It looks like the record of a chess game. Is there something wrong with it? This was discovered in the victim's cell. It was Knightley's memo. Where are rolling? You also discovered this note in the very same place. Not just not, not in just Knightley's cell, but in Dogen's too, correct? What are you? Don't say you don't know about this chessboard in the special in the special cell. After all, you would have kept an eye on Dogen's actions down to the smallest details. No. To be more precise, it was it wasn't Dogen that you need to keep an eye on. The warden was searching for Mr. Dogen's henchmen. From the start, I found it strange that the warden interrogated the prisoners personally, since he used his henchmen to threaten harm to her family. Warden Roland interrogated Dogen to expose them. So what are you saying? As he inspected Dogen's mail, you must have known. He played correspondence chess. And then Knightley appeared with the chess memo in his hand. We deduced that he and Dogen were connected. You must have arrived at the same conclusion as well. However, you went one step too far in your reasoning. You thought Knightley was one of Dogen's henchmen, who had come to kill you. And so that's why you interrogated Knightley, Knightley boy. If the boss wouldn't, won't crack, then go after his henchmen. In addition, you were something when you were something when you interrogated. You discovered something when you interrogated. Besides chessboard, you found a portable chisel. The murder weapon. To the to the to Warden Roland, the chisel was a symbol of Dogen. And that's the final straw. You believe Knightley was one of Dogen's henchmen and you killed him. It seems that there would be no rebuttal. Judge Courtney, your verdict. Though it is incredibly unfortunate, it seems that there's no room for doubt. I shall announce my verdict for the murder of Horace Knightley. Twice my sacred verdict has been interrupted? Who was that? <laughs> Warden Roland. <laughs> How strange. You guys don't really understand anything. It seems the only one that you don't understand is you. Me? Oh, I understand one thing very well. There's a huge contradiction in your logic, Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm. Once she's cornered, she starts spouting out nonsense. Pay, pay no, pay no heed to it. George Courtney, your verdict. I'm interested in hearing what the warden has to say. What? I thought so. I just have one thing that you, m I want to say. One. Please take a good look at the autopsy report. The autopsy report I brought, that brought with me. I heard exactly what you said earlier, Justine, darling. You said the wound was four inches deep. Four inches. No way. Could that, that Chinese chisel have made a wound four inches deep? Impossible! How could I have made such an error? Oh, forgive me, goddess of law. Well, I believe that overturns a hypothesis. What we do, Mr. Edgeworth? What? What? What do we do? What will we do? It'll be all right, pal. Mr. Edgeworth's always. Whoa! Hey, now he's gone all white. Hey, 
You're a defense attorney, aren't you? Isn't there something you can do, pal? Do that turnabout thing. Make <laughs> make some earth-shattering objection. Uncle Ray's a hard worker, but without the size of evidence, we're just whipping a dead horse. Here. Does it mean it's hopeless? The true killer is Warden Roland. If it's not her, then nothing nothing that happens fits. But the chisel is isn't the murder weapon. Is there any other sharp object here? Is there still some mystery there's still some mysteries remaining in this case? Oh, I think I know where the thing is. Oh. However, we don't have the evidence to solve them at this present time. We have no choice but to continue this battle in the courtroom. Objection. That would give the killer a chance to destroy the evidence. Are you mocking the court? No, 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 no. I didn't mean anything like that. You mean you you look perplexed, Miles. Thought of anything yet? The chisel is not the murder weapon in the case. What is? It's no use. We're back where we started. No objections, Prosecutor Edgeworth? By the way, any basis statements will be punished accordingly. Da, 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 da. It's no good. I can't think of anything. I need a, I need more time. I regret to say I have no... No, Mr. Edgeworth. Remember what Mr. Shield said. If we give up, Simon will... Have you forgotten that sad look on his face? He was the one that suffered the most from Knightley's death. If you can't save him, who will? Besides, Simon believes in us. We can't give up. Okay. Miles, looks like you found a good partner. It looks like little K said. It's like little K says. Whenever you're backed into a corner, think of your client. Keep fighting until the very end. Isn't that the feeling you're getting, Gregory? Your old man. No matter what troubles he faced, he would always turn things around and save his client. You ha you got his blood in you, right? In that case, you're the only one who can turn this around. Judge Courtney. The look in your eyes has suddenly changed. If you do intend to speak, you better be prepared to face the conse consequences. Your logic thus far has been misplaced numerous times. If this were to happen again, I would consider you unfit to call yourself a prosecutor. You hand over your badge. That's right. My reasoning is about this case has been has been misplaced numerous times. Have I been have I made a grave miscalculation? Wait, my logic is misplaced? Still silent? I can't condone this waste of time. Well then. Mr. Edward. Mr. Edgeworth! I will announce my verdict. That's it! I have to turn my logic around. My, my logic isn't misplaced, it's been misled. This court finds the defendant, Simon Keys. It's a little too early to hand down a verdict? Actually, I think it's rather late. Don't you agree, Justine, darling? Enlighten us. What? Try to remember the eyewitness accounts of the, his dog in his absence and from the sh animal show. When he first heard that the information, my suspicions immediately fell on Dogen. I'm amazed you take such pride in retelling your previous failings. For what was not the killer's? Well, but that was not the killer's aim. What if we assume that their intention from the start? Of course, the chisel serve the same purpose. Knightley's body was stabbed in the same spot with multiple sharp objects. This shows that he was stabbed with the chisel after the real murder weapon was removed. By soaking the chisel in Knightley's blood. The killer wanted us to mislead us into thinking that the chisel was a murder weapon. Why? That's because... Why did the killer want us to think that the chisel was the murder weapon? Get, yeah, to get Dogen expelled. 
Morning, Roland. You made use of this chisel's image. Chisel's image? What are you trying to say? Mr. DeBesti, when you see this chisel, what do, what does it suggest to you? Eh? Something like Dogen's the Killer. Ah, oh, damn it, sorry. My name is Dogen's the Killer. Now do you understand? That was the warden's aim. Ah, she wanted us to suspect the person with the chisels. Indeed. That was her plan from the very beginning. To make Sir Han Dogen out to be the killer. I understand your logic. If it is true that the warden did not... Then it is true that Warden didn't think kindly of Dogen. But, you understand, don't you? This alone doesn't prove that she was the killer. As I thought, it isn't, isn't enough. The remaining chance is for me to find the, mil the real murder weapon. If you have no more evidence, I believe this conversation is over. I can prove it if, if I found the real murder weapon. It doesn't matter what you say, we did a clean sweep of this place. It's as Sebastian says, in the end we couldn't have found any weapons. In other words, such proof is impossible. No, the murder weapon must be still somewhere in this prison. As long as, as, this, as, as, long as this exists. The security gate. Hmm, you remember its name after all. Are you mocking me? It's because of those things, that you can't take metal objects in or out of this place. Ah! Right. As long as those security gates exist, the murder weapon should still be in here. That also means no weapon could have been brought into the prison. In the end, in the end we're back to the same mystery after all. Just Courtney. Prosecutor Director, surely you realize if the real murder weapon is still in this prison, one must consider how it must have got there in the first place. The chisel was concealed within the chessboard, but the chisel is not the real murder weapon, which means the real murder weapon must have been smuggled in somehow. The way it was smuggled in, can you prove that? Yeah. How did Warden Roland smuggle the weapon into the prison? You had evidence transferred from the precinct. Yeah, we borrowed all the evidence concerning Dogen. Yeah, I had been interrogating him personally in my office, but... That's it! She could have used that. It shows another way that the weapon could have been brought into the prison. Um. Let's see. The the, the other way I can show it is the, um. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. This shows that another way it can be brought into the prison. So, uh, let's see. Uh, hmm, this is a security game? <laughs> Professor Edgeworth, that's how you bring in metal objects into the prison. Oops. Indeed, but this e with even metal could be... Oops. Exactly how does this let metal objects be brought into the prison? What? You really can't use that to bring in, bring in metal objects? Professor Edgeworth, I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> hmm. Sorry to let you down. Hmm. No, there is a way. Besides, sending it in a package. It shows that that method. Well then, Professor, show us. Show it to us. I'm not sure if I should say this in front of Kay. It shows another way that the weapon could have been brought into the prison. Uh, what else could be hiding? Mm, the bell? Take that! Hmm. Yesterday, Dogen said this. Yes, my bells. There are only two in the world. Only two? They're custom made, after, attached to my knife and Anubis's collar. Even though I can only re rely on my ears. I can easily Id identify them. Alas, one of them have been cons conf uh, one of them has been confiscated and is not in my possession. It's possible the murder weapon was brought in as a confiscated evidence. What? What? Dogen's knife was confiscated and stored in the premises. Furthermore, 
the bell was attached to the knife. Oh, I get it now. It can't be the bell on the chisel. Exactly. It, the, it, the, the killer took it from the knife and retouched it to the chisel. But only the fingerprints on the chisel are nightlies. The killer probably wore gloves when they made the switch. She made the she made the chisel out to be the murder weapon by attaching Dogen's bell. But in doing so, Dogen appeared in, in so in doing so made Dogen appear to be the culprit. Furthermore, the handling of the evidence that the bell originally belongs to was only possible for someone with proper authority. Who, sir? Who had the authority? Come on, Gumju. Why, why don't we ask the warden what she thinks? You can find bells anywhere. Anyone could have attached it, right? Objection! Hmm. I see. Do you not? Do, so you don't know these boat? These bells are Dogen's trademark. There are only two in the world. What? What? So attaching the bell would naturally make you the killer. Do you have evidence that I have a knife? You don't, do you? Of course. I understand. In that case, Mr. Devesti, I'd like you to request an investigation immediately. Eh? Ah, uh, but if you find it, it'll probably be problematic for me. That doesn't matter now. It's necessary that we reveal the truth, and you are a prosecutor, aren't you not? Well, even if you say that, Chris is useless prosecutor. If if I only had investigative rights. Besides, we can't investigate without the warden's permission, right? There's no way she would approve. We have no chance to investigate ourselves. If you don't have evidence. There's no use in continuing this conversation. The goddess of law does not smile upon those with no evidence. This uh, had to be continued in the courtroom. Not good. If you're given the warden t more time here, she'll definitely destroy the evidence. It seems like I have no choice but to raise an objection to install for time. But, I don't have anything definite. Is that really acceptable? Is it really like me to do something rec th th this reckless? No. Not good. Now is not the time for hesitation. Right now, I am not a prosecutor, but I am an attorney's assistant. And I need to protect my client. I'm the only one that who can save him now. In that case... Even if it's a one in a million chance, I have to take it. It's sink or swim for us. Should I raise an objection? Of course you should raise an objection. It's gonna be the end of the game if you don't, probably. It almost feels like I've turned into a certain bluffing defense, defense attorney. <laughs> ah, Phoenix, I need to make a cameo of him in here, come on. But right now, I can't stand, come to a standstill here. Objection! Hold it. Prosecutor Edward? What now? I just realized something. What would that be, pray tell? Naturally, the whereabouts of the real murder weapon. Dogen's knife. Mr. Mr. Edward, is this really true? Yes. Though it is a lie. Though it is a lie. I find it hard to believe it. This is a, this isn't a bluff, is it? Hmm. You under uh, underestimate. The word bluff does not exist in my dictionary. <laughs> this is bad for my heart. <laughs> There's no way you can know because such a thing doesn't even exist. Well then, could you enlighten us? Where's this real murder weapon? Think, think. Where would the, somewhere the police wouldn't have looked? A blind spot in in this animal-filled prison, a hiding place where the warden would have complete confidence in. Hmm? Hiding place? Come to think of it, yeah, didn't. Oh yeah. It was ine ine inedible. Anubis, show them your mouth. As you can see, a dog of this size can easily conceal a small chisel in its. But, there aren't many ways to hide things from an investigator's eyes. Prosecutor Edgeworth, how long do you intend to keep us waiting? It's possible, but I'm talking about a big gamble here. This place is where the real murder weapon is hidden in. Here. It should be this lake right here, because remember the metal detector went off? It's probably going to talk about it right now. Dun, dun, dun. You're in the courtyard? Courtyard? Indeed. That's not e enough information. Please show us mo in more detail. Where is this real murder weapon hidden? 
it's in the lake like I was talking about. Cause remember that alligator? Take that! That's it. Right then. Hmm? What's the matter, detective? It looks like the metal detector is reacting to this alligator. Really? Why? Of course, that's why the metal detector reacted. Just Courtney, I'd like to take I'd like you to take a look at this. The chisel? Wasn't that just a fake murder weapon? Dogan hid his chisel inside his dog's mouth. And the real murder weapon is was very hidden in the very much in the same way. The real murder weapon is in the pond inside the alligator. What? What? We can confirm that the metal a detective reacted to the alligator. Just Courtney, please have the inside of the, the alligator examined. I give my consent. We'll have to call a veterinarian. I'll make that little girl open her mouth. I can make that little girl open her mouth. Can I help? Yes, go on ahead. We're in rolling. Discovering the real, real murder weapon will solve this, settle this matter once and for all. Why don't you do the audible thing and confess now? I... What would I have to confess to? In that case, you can just wait until your fate is sealed. Ugh. Ah, we found it, sir. Just like you would say... Uh, just like you would say where you said it would be. It's over. Patricia Rowland. The real murder weapon is none other than Dogen's knife. And the one that, who murdered Horace Knightley can only be you. Dogen was an evil one. I didn't do anything wrong. It was completely reasonable. That guy is one of Dogen's henchmen. Him. If he only had never come to my home. I can at least still be happy. My special paradise. He ruined it, all of it! Him! That no good assassin! Him! 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 Oh my gosh. Well, those are all animals? Did not know that. March 28, 12.34 p.m. Detention Center. Hallway. Mr. DeBestio of the Best, we have the results. DeBestio of the Best? Looks like even the forensics officers have it tough. <laughs> we found the traces of Nutley's blood on, the Dogen, on Dogen's knife. It's just like you said. You're the best, DeBestie. Alright, good job, but don't stop there. Keep the praise coming. Yes, sir. You're so incredible. It brings tears to my eyes. Oh my god, I hate this guy. From Sorrow? Well done, Sebastian. Next comes the following inves follow-up investigation. What are you talking about, Justine? Hasn't the case already been solved already? We have not confirmed yet if Knightley was truly Dogen's henchman. One of Dogen's henchmen. There's also a chance that uh, Warden Rowland jumped to conclusions. Oh? Oh? That's one of the remaining uncertainties in this case. Ah, uh, anyways, let's keep investigating. Hey you there, come with me. Since I'm the best, the truth will appear before, before me first. When that moment arrives, make sure don't, you don't miss it. Yes sir, I'm looking forward to the witnessing of your first rate ability. Let's go! We live in a troubling, we live in a troubling times, wouldn't you agree? The would-be assassin of the president would be found murdered in the prison. Nelly had not planned to assassinate the president. The truth is not as vital as you seem to, to believe it. Believe it to be. Not to this world, not, not to the law. That can't be right. Believe what you will. However, as long as Prosecutor Edgeworth remains a prosecutor, it is an inescapable reality. The prosecutor is not someone who demands a guilty verdict. That is what I believe. Yeah, you learned that from Phoenix right there. Those who are merely... Uh, those are merely your values. The law is not a plaything of, of any one person. If you will not submit to that, you will have to do well to prepare for the consequences. What's that supposed to mean, pal? Don't tell me you're... you're gonna... Now then, this is where I must take my leave. 
Prosecutor Edgeworth. George Courtney is right. The law should not be served by any one person's desires. However, if the truth is bent as a result of that, can that really be called justice? Ah, Simon! Ah! What happened? They say that you could come out already? Well, honestly, I don't know for sure. All of a sudden, they were like, you're free to go, and you should thank Mr. Edgeworth. Well, that's because he found out who the real murderer was. Really? He, he did? Mr. Edgeworth. Ah, ooh, no way, no way, no way! Even if you glare at me like that, it's useless! I'm innocent, after all, you can't make me guilty! Simon, Simon! You should thank him, you know? You're right! Thank you very much! I want to thank you too! Good grief. Um, Mr. Defense Attorney, can I ask you one more question? Yes, you may. But I'm not Defense Attorney. I thought Knightley and I were friends. No, I meant best- I mean best friends. I always thought we were- You don't think so anymore? Well, I'm just wondering. There were some things I had no idea about. Just like how he could hate someone enough to kill them. That's why maybe he never trusted me either? Simon, that's not true. You're lying, because if I had known, I would have stopped him. I could have stopped him. I would have told him there's no need to be angry with anyone. Mr. Keys, don't think he disliked you either. I don't think he did. Let's show him proof that he, that he trusted him. He should be the chessboard, because he asked him to get it for him. If he didn't, then he wouldn't ask him to. That's what I gave to... Knightley did ha he hit a chisel in here. Most likely to aid, it, aid in his escape. Escape? He used me? He trusted you. Trusted in you. He knew you'd bring it up to him without looking at it and without question. In doing so, just like that, you were caught in the up and everything. <laughs> ah, Mr. Knightley! Knightley, you idiot! Looks like he gets it. Simon is not as dumb as he looks, after all. I'm sure he'll be back to a normal be back to normal by tomorrow. Is that supposed to be a compliment? Uh, I'll be strong! Oh, sorry again. I'll be a splendid wild tamer, for Knightley's sake. Excellent, that's the spirit. Ah, I almost forgot. If you like, please come to our next show. I also will be performing in it. The big, the big, the very big circus always performs in fun for all ages. That sounds like fun. Let's go, Mr. Edward. Hmm. Well, I'll think about it. Well, we need to get back to practicing right away. You'll be a regent today. What? The tiger? No way, no way, no way! It'll be fine, he's a good boy. No way, there's no way it would be fine. Please cut me a break, boss! <laughs> and, there, and there they go. But man, bravo, bravo! You really put on a good show today, Miles. It's all thanks to you, Mr. Shields. Without your help, she might have gotten away. Not to mention allowing us to continue the investigation. Oh man, cut it out already. You're gonna make me blush. I never know when you're being serious. Uncle Ray is always being serious. And how was it, Miles? How does it feel to be a defense attorney to save people? Defense attorney? That really took me back. Just like when you're next, being next to your old man again. Huh, it's been a while since I felt this good. It was, well... It was somewhat difficult to get to say it was a good thing. Come on, Miles. Are you sure you don't want to become a defense attorney? What? You know, pick up where your father left off. Don't you want to save people like he did? What are you talking about, pal? Mr. Mr. Edgeworth's a prosecutor. But is it really unusual for a prosecutor to become a defense attorney these days? That's true. Unusual isn't the problem here. Don't be so upset. It's normal. You know, normal. 
Yeah, he became one too for a while. Normal, pal. Haha. Uh -huh. You'll make a powerful defense uh, defense team. Mr. Shields, I'm a prosecutor. And Uncle Ray is a defense attorney. That's why. I'm being serious about this. Just that's just my opinion. Feel free to jump by any time if you have a chance a change of heart. I'll be waiting for you. Follow in my father's footsteps. Me? Become a defense attorney? I'm going to become a defense attorney just like my dad! Should I become a defense attorney? Like my father? Save your game! Patch ends here. Oh. Okay. I guess this is where it ends, guys. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to move that. So, this ends right here, guys. So, man, I wish we knew more about this, but... Um, I guess the game ends right here. So, I guess when the next patch comes out for case 3, 4, and 5, I'll definitely play it and let's play it for you guys. Hey, see ya. See ya next time.